Whether you're a Leonardo neophyte or you've been with the platform for a long time, here are 12 tips that will really help you to take full advantage of Leonardo AI platform or whatever platform you're using. One, lead into guidance and prompt magic. These are tools that you're gonna to use to kind of refine your renders. So here's what you can do. The prompt strength, prompt magic here, version two uh, is available for both free and paid. Version three is available only for those who have paid subscription. So version two here, the prompt strength is going to be 0.3. So that means that you're gonna actually, it's gonna have more license to actually play with your prompt. If you want more adherence to your prompt, you go ahead and you put it up to 0.45 or maybe I think what I've done is I've actually done 0.7. Between 0.7 and 0.9, I find is a nice little sweet spot. Now, as far as the guidance is concerned, the guidance is another way for you to actually how strong your prompt is weighted. So prompt magic is one of the two factors that you can use to really, if you have a very complex prompt and you want Leonardo to really stick to it, choose a prompt guidance between seven and nine. If you go anywhere outside of that, you open yourself up to anomalies, but you could also get a better prompt. Basically prompt magic and guidance helped you to refine your image and let it stick to your prompt, especially if you have a detailed prompt that you want to make sure that you get, you get a proper render of the image that you want. Two, tiling. If you're going to use Leonardo to help you with your POD designing, that's print on demand merchandise design, and you're going to be creating patterns, you're going to want to include this tiling feature here. I created a video about it, but it's very simple. What you want to do is you want to put the tiling on and it'll come out as a nice seamless pattern versus looking like a patchwork. So if you're trying to create a nice flow within your, if you're going to do curtains or if you're going to do, uh, you know, a skirt or whatever, you can actually go ahead and just do tiling very quickly. Three, play with perspectives. Perspectives are really important for changing how, um, Basically, it just plays around with how the how the viewer interprets and how the viewer feels about a picture. So one of my favorite ones is a split level. So I'm actually here going to conjure up a, an image of a split level underwater view of a sea and a tropical island to show you what I mean. Again, this is one of many perspectives. So as we can see that we have a different perspective here, let me actually blow it up a little bit. You can take a look at what this is here. It's basically an underwater, it's like you're in the water and you can see both with your goggles on, you can see both what's underneath the water and what's above it. So you can see the tropical islands here and you can see this little fish here. So with that kind of perspective, you can definitely create some very eye-catching uh, visuals. And of course, this is just one of the different types of perspective. There's also, you know, I think there's a Dutch angle. And of course there's aerial view, there's worm's eye view. So you can play around with that. To, and those will help you to create more emotional renders. Four, reduce color bleeding. Playing with color in Leonardo is a great exercise because one of the problems with AI in general is that it has a tendency to color bleed. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a quick trick. And it's a very simple, it's something that you've been told many times and probably haven't really paid much attention to, but it really does help with the color bleeding. For example, a woman walking in a purple cape or uh, walking in a lush forest. Now, as you can see with this, I said, you know, she's in a purple cape and then there's also purple on a tinge. So there's a lot of purple tinging here. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the purple tinging. And there's a simple trick to that. And it involves being more detailed. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and add more detail to this prompt. So I have the purple cape, but then I'm going to add thick brown trees, thick green um, grass with patches of white and yellow daisies. Now this will not completely eliminate the purple, but you'll see that it significantly reduces it. So here we have, she's in an, a white cape with purple, which is cool. It actually does reduce it a little bit more, but now you're seeing that it looks a lot like a painting you're seeing that other colors are popping up and you do have the little lilacs here and everything that's that's fine but what you can do is you can be as specific as possible within your prompt and that'll help you to reduce the color bleeding 
it won't necessarily get rid of it completely, but you'll see a definite improvement. You can edit it in Canvas if you want. Five, play with different color palettes. When you're playing with color, you, ch again, change the mood and change the actual tone and how the color and how the image is received by the person who's viewing it. So let's take a look at this. I have a Model T, I was just playing around with it. The Model T is a rather old vehicle. I believe it's one of the first um, Ford cars. And what if I were to put it on a beach and I were to say, um, monochrome, monochrome green. So what we see here is it's a very, it's washed out. It looks like a very an old time movie. You have this little color green and that little pop of color um, makes you think that this is an old time, maybe a movie, maybe you're watching some sort, or maybe you're, you're reading some sort of a book. Now, if we were to go ahead, so it gives you a very nostalgic look and feel. Now, if we were to go ahead and say, you know, earth tones. And what we see here is a very whimsical looking Model T. Looks like it's more of a hut than a Model T, but still it's very cute. So this is, has, has a more fun feel to it. And because of the brightness of, of the sun, it, it just looks like it's going to pop. And it's a very unusual image. So play around with color palettes. You can play with sunset colors and everything. I actually have a video you can check out here that has all the different types of color palettes and I'll, I'll put a link up here. Thanks so much for your time. If you could like this video, if you find it useful, it'll help me to figure out what kind of content you wanna see. And then there's the YouTube algorithm thing. Yep, we all know how that goes. So thanks for your time and let's get back to it. Six, understand the power of a single word. A single word can change how your render looks, how it feels, and the, and the feelings it does give to the viewer. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to put in just a print, and just to show you. Hey, again, we have something here. It's very stately. It looks like he's doing a portrait. It's very light, airy. You can see the different the, 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 the perspectives here. So it's a good portrait. So let's go for a warlock. Here we go, menacing, deadly, a darker feel to the image. Warrior. A more serious image, ready for battle. It's a much stronger, um, it shows more strength and it has a little bit of dignity to it. And also it's a fantastic render, it's very detailed. So how you choose your words matters when you're doing a Leonardo prop, so choose them wisely. Seven, remove filler words. We all know that ChatGPT is a fantastic tool for a lot of things. However, if you're going to be using ChatGPT for your renders, you want to remove the filler words. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a render I created with a ChatGPT prompt. Looks great. However, when you take a look at this, there's just so much you can cut out. For example, for one thing, you don't need to really tell it to generate anything. That's what it's there for. So you want to say, Quantum Voyage or whatever you want to name it, standing on precipice portal great adaptive suit sleek and you can basically do that sleek futuristic adaptive suit and so on one of the things i find with ChatGPT is that it says capturing the essence of something really Leonardo doesn't care about what it's capturing the essence of necessarily. 
So what you want to do is you want to go in and take out all the unnecessary phrases, whatever you use in ChatGPT, so that you have more room so that when you see a render, you can actually say, okay, I want to add this perspective. I want to actually do the composition this way. So you have more room to play around with this. So get rid of the filler words. Just keep it simple. Eight, scale your prompts down. Now, going back to this prompt about the Quantum Voyager, I want to actually reiterate that as far as keeping it simple, you want to kind of make your renders a little less complicated. Now, to me, this is a relatively simple, but it's got some complexities to it. So what you want to do is you want to actually bring it down to the lowest level. So you want to see, um, you know, Quantum Warrior on the precipice of the thing, then you want to say holographic wings emitting vibrant energy. So you want to take this out, take a look at it. Again, it's very simple. I think it's under a thousand, under a hundred characters. Whether you're having an, a problem with an image render from Leonardo AI or any other image generator, you want to take a look at your prompt, make it as efficient as possible just give it the basic ideas yeah you can make a more complex prompt but when you have a more complex prompt you have a chance of coming out with a really rich image but you also have the chance that the actual platform will mess up your image and then you're gonna have to start all over so in this case what i've done is i've actually just scaled it down a little bit and it looks like a pretty good image that i can play with now i can go ahead and add whatever i want to it but it definitely helps that if you're having problems with your prompt just start with the basics. Nine, play with photo settings for more realistic images. When I wanna create really photorealistic images for if I'm gonna be doing something for my book or anything like that, I like to play around with photo settings. I, I'm not a photography enthusiast expert by any means. So I've had to really lean on ChatGPT to help me get the right terms and to put the right perspectives and the right photography um, lengths and ISOs together properly so that it makes sense to, to ChatGPT um, to Leonardo. So what I'm going to put here is just a very simple prompt that I came up with um, that I that had a little help with ChatGPT to create. And it's just basically a ghostly image of a shipwreck. So in here, I put f-stop, um, apertures, isos, and all that stuff to put in there. And it, this is what makes sense. So let me go ahead and see how that comes out. Now, as you can see, this looks like something that you would definitely be able to take a picture of. So it does fulfill the promise of being photorealistic. So fo dealing with photo photography settings, if you're a photographer, if you're enthusiastic, then go ahead and put those different um, terms in there and you'll come up with something a little bit more realistic. Because low power and power outages are too common, I'm using Bluetti's portable solar system to keep my lights on and appliances safe. Click the link below to see if the Bluetti solar power system is right for you. 10. Play with styles and media. You can play around with different styles and different textures within your render to give it, of course, that different feel. So let's take a look at this. Let me see. Um, female superhero. Half of futurism. Futuristic. Full body suit. Make her charcoal. style put pointillism so again I'm using uh, you know the charcoal sketch style we put sketch style and then I'm using pointillism which is, which is pointillism which is a um, 
a type of arts, artistic style. So we can go ahead and take a look and see how that comes out. Awesome. So you can see that it's got the point of this. It's, it's basically, it looks like a charcoal sketch. So it's got that kind of diffused look. Then you have the little pointillism, um, which makes it gives that nice little, it makes it look like it, it's um, made of dots, which I think Shirat was a very good, an artist of that. So it looks absolutely beautiful. You can go ahead and play around with it and do, you know, acrylic style and then put in impressionism. And here we have something that is very vibrant and colorful and does kind of look like 1970s and it's just beautiful. And you can definitely use this as a, as a kind of a pop art expression. But the idea here is that you can play around with styles of media and then you can reference different artists or different uh, movements. And I do have a style and media video in Aldi, but I good, but a goodie that I'm gonna put that you can reference here. And I also have the 90 artists, the 90 plus artists you can reference in your prompts to give that extra boost to your to your renders. So I'll put both of those links up here, one here. And then another one here, so you can go ahead and check that out when you have a chance after you finish this video. 11. Agnostic editing. When you're editing an image and you have an idea, if the image was created within Leonardo, then you have an idea of what the fine-tuned model is. You can go ahead and use that fine-tuned model. But what if you were to do something that was not created in Leonardo? Here we have a picture, a very large picture of my backyard, or actually my front yard. So what we have here is, you know, an image, it's a photograph, a digital photograph. So how would you edit it? In this case, you want to do something agnostic. You want to choose from your list, stable diffusion 2.1 or 1.5. I've not tried SDXL, but I'm pretty sure it would probably work as well. So stable diffusion 2.1 is very agnostic. It does not have a style agenda, so you don't need to sit there and tell it to, you don't have to worry too much that it's going to put in something like very cartoon-like, like maybe Dream Shape or RPG would put in. So what you do is you basically go in, you prompt whatever you need, you do the sketch, and then you, you go ahead and you edit it. I have a video here that I did with a picture of my backyard. I'm gonna put this right here, and you can take a look and see the steps that I took to different to edit different aspects of that photograph using Stable Diffusion 2.1 most. 12, raid the community feed and the Discord. One of the best things about Leonardo is the community feed. You can take a look at all the different renders and you can take a look at what they're doing and how they're doing it. And then you can click on anyone and read the renders. This is a great way for me to really learn how to do, if you've never used it before, you can learn how to do a render Leonardo and if you've done it for a while, but you want to kind of spice up your, your, your repertoire and you want to find some new designs, you can go ahead and take a look at how this person phrased something. Perhaps they use a pers uh, perspective you've never used, or perhaps they've used some kind of a style you've never seen or combined a couple of styles. It's a lot of fun to go into the community feed and take a look at what um, some great experts, I think that their experts have been doing and kind of borrow from their knowledge and remix from my own and see how I can play with it. Another thing is that the Discord feed is also a really great resource if you want to learn the basics of how to use certain perspectives and just to see what everybody else is doing. Maybe you don't have, um, they don't have access on here or you don't have access to their work on here. Maybe they put something up, but dealing with the community and working with the community and seeing what everybody else is doing is a great way to learn even if you've been using Leonardo for a long time. So that's it. Thanks for your time. And of course, um, just to let you guys know again that I have been uh, working on my newsletter, the Gen AI Lookout. And you can go ahead and I'll leave a link in the description again so you can take a look and see if that is something that you want to be a part of. You can join. I put out once, maybe twice a month. And you can go ahead and check that out. Again, thanks for your time. And I will see you guys in the next video.